very much for that kind introduction. Can you hear me okay? Yes, it's on now. And uh, I'd like to thank the meeting organisers for inviting me and uh, giving me a chance to talk about uh, what I hope you will agree are some exciting new potential therapies we've been developing in my lab at Baylor and as I say now having moved to University of Colorado. So, well, as, as the title of my talk says, I'm going to be talking about new spinal cord cells and molecules that, that are found in the spinal cord that we can use to try and repair the spinal cord. And that's a theme we're going to be touching on again and again as we go through the talk. And uh, so what I'm going to do initially is, is give you an overview of some of the main theories in the field to try and explain why these axons don't regenerate nerve fibers called axons don't regenerate after a spinal cord injury. And, uh, and then give you an, uh, an overview of some of the, the animal models that, that we've developed to try and you know, work out why these axons don't regenerate. And then using these models to then hook, can we come in with our new therapies and, and get things to regenerate. So in, uh, in general terms, in the uh, immature central nervous system, prior to clearly defined time points in development for the sensory system in rats, it's around about postnatal day two or three. If you make an injury before that time, cut an axon. But if you cut an axon, the part of the axon that's disconnected from the cell body, the neuron, degenerates, it's lost, and there's a loss of function. However, before in sensory system, uh, sensory system in rats, you know, postnatal day two or three, before that time point, the axon can regrow through the injury site and reestablish a connection and reestablish function. However, in, in the adult central nervous system, so again, if you have an injury, you cut the axon, part of the axon is going to the cell body degenerates. Unfortunately, the axon fails to regrow through the injury site, and there's a, a, a loss of function. So, you know, what has changed from the early nervous system to the more mature nervous system that's bringing about this failure of axons to regenerate, the failure of these axons to cross the injury site? Well, one thing uh, that's very different is that the, the structure of the pathways, the white matter pathways, where axons mm -hmm. usually reside in the spinal cord and brain, is very different in the early uh, 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 nervous system to, to the more mature nervous system. And this is a cartoon uh, uh, schematic I've got for you here. And around about embryonic day 15 in rats, when axons are first growing through the, the white matter pathways, they're very short. And, they have, and these pathways have a very sort of rudimentary uh, cellular structure. What you find is you have a lot of precursors, I'll be talking about these, the glial precursors, that sit in the, in the ventral part of, of the pathway. When they, so when the axons first grow, it's a very rudimentary structure, very short distance they have to grow. And then as this uh, tract develops, there's more axon growth that's continuing, but uh, uh, with time, this is uh, day of birth, and four days after, 10 days after, six days after. But what happens is you have this glial architecture. Glia, you know, that's the, the general term that's used for support cells in the nervous system. And this same structure builds up around the axons after they've grown. So the environment that we're now trying to regenerate axons through in the adult is very different from that which the, the axons first grew in the embryo. So we're not actually trying to recapitulate uh, development in some ways. We're actually, there's a whole new biology when you grow axons in adult pathways. If you go to high power and uh, uh, the structure and the, the schematic here, now we're looking at the, 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 the glial architecture, the cellular architecture of the white matter. What is it we're trying to regenerate? What is it that works really best for, for transmitting signals up and down the spinal cord, the white matter? All you have are, are astrocytes, they're l large cells. They sit in rows of oligodendrocytes, ol oligodendrocytes in blue here. And you get about eight to 10 oligodendrocytes, and then another astrocyte, eight to 10, 10 oligos, another astrocyte. So you have this almost crystalline structure in the white matter, and, and, uh, and, and the axons are being myelinated by the oligodendrocytes. You see, oligodendrocytes. You see there's a cell body here, it sends out a process, myelinates a length of axon. So it's this structure that we really want to regenerate if we want the spinal cord to function really well, certainly in terms of, of, of uh, 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 signals passing up and down the white matter pathways. So over the last sort of 100 years or so, we can really break it down to sort of four main theories that have been put forward to try and explain why it is that, that axons don't regenerate in the adult. The first is that basically, as neurons get older, they lose the ability to regenerate that axon. And there's good evidence for that. The, the next theory, which was proposed over 100 years ago by Santiago Ramon and Cajal, a very famous neuro neuroscientist, was that, at, once again, as part of normal development, the spinal cord and brain loses the ability to, to support growth. There's a loss of growth supporting molecules in, in, in the white matter or gray matter. In, in the, and, and there's good evidence to support this as well. 
The next theory, which is a little more recent, and Martin Schwab and others have been proposing this theory, is that the myelin sheath, which develops in the white matter in the later stages of that white, white matter development, has molecules on it that are potently inhibitory to axon growth. And uh, I'll touch on that one again in a minute. In fact, this, this theory is so popular, there's actually a Hollywood movie that was made about the myelin theory of inhibition of regeneration. And uh, uh, Gene Hackman and, and Hugh Grant, and of course, you know, we end up with the Hollywood version of uh, uh, Regeneration scientist, he has an, you know, Hugh, Hugh, uh, rather, Gene Hackman has an underground lab and you know, he's taking people off the street and, and damaging the spinal cords and he gets too much regeneration for axons coming out of people's ears. It's all silly you know, Hollywood stuff. But it just shows you the impact of this theory on, on the field of you know, and, and, and the public in terms of there's even a movie made about it. However, the last uh, theory here is one of my favorites is that the scar tissue is developed directly at the site of injury, presents a, a molecular and physical barrier to axon growth, because that's where the axons fail to grow. So me, when, you know, being trying to be pragmatic, I thought, okay, something's happening at the injury site. Let's have a look at it. So I'm going to introduce you now to one of the uh, models that we've been using. So uh, all this work's been done in adult rats. And we wanted to develop a, 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 a series of experiments where we could look at the relative contribution of each of those theories the overall failure of regeneration. So you can start separating whether it's the scar is the problem, or it's the myelin's the problem, or, or the you know, old neurons just can't grow an axon. So we use this model here. And so it's a adult rat, and we're making a transection injury in the dorsal columns. And what I'll be talking about today, we're not, we won't be making contusion injuries, we're making transection injuries. And we say, well, you know, how's that going to model my spinal cord injury? Well, the bottom line is that the transection injuries cut, you cut the spinal cord, it makes the worst kind of scar tissue. So we can overcome that. And we think that when we work with contusion injuries, it won't be so much of a challenge. We'll see what we're working on. Okay, so the model is at the C1, C2 level of the, the spinal cord, we make the transection injury, and now the, the track, the pathway beyond this injury, because it's an ascending sensory pathway, is undergoing degeneration. Mm -hmm. So the idea is then we use a transplantation model I helped develop in London when I was working with Jeffrey Raisman. And the idea is we can put in fully adult neurons. We're going to do a real Frankenstein kind of experiment here. Adult neurons into adult central nervous system. And the idea is we're going to transplant these neurons in and then look uh, in, uh, uh, with this system whether they can grow axons in this degenerating spinal cord beyond an injury. And we're putting these neurons in so gently that no scar tissue forms around the transplant. So to a certain extent, uh, uh, where, the, where the transplant is, we're taking the scar out of the equation. And now putting these cells into a degenerative white matter, can that degenerating white matter now support axon growth? And what we saw was a remarkable amount of axon outgrowth. We had no growth factors. These are just neurons from the 